Hi guys, Tom Hunt here. Welcome to another episode of The Kit Room where we go through the more technical aspects of lure fishing. And today we're going to be going through a bit of street fishing equipment. So a style I absolutely love. I fish a lot of tournaments like this. I've had a lot of great results in the last nine tournaments that I fished over the last uh, ten, nine or ten months. Uh, I've managed to get a top three podium place in eight out of the nine. So um, I really just want to pass on a few tips and tricks. I get asked a few questions. What do you use? How do you approach your street fishing? Uh, and so that's what this video is all about. Now to start with, we, um, we've got the pouch. This is the Gunky Walk pouch. You know, people have got different styles that they like. Some people like using backpacks, but for me, a backpack restricts you in a certain way that you could probably get more kit in it if you needed it, but that's not really the aim of what I go street fishing for. I don't go street fishing to be, a, to be able to take as much equipment as possible. So, you know, the, f the first point that I'd make is street fishing is about trimming it down as much as, as possible. You know, getting the kit down to using a lot of your confidence baits, having a few small boxes, enough stuff to get you through the day and to have versatility, but you don't want to overload yourself. You know, for me, it's about covering miles, covering different water, lots of distance, um, and then that's how you learn the most about your fishing, I personally think. So a backpack isn't for me because I also like to fish very intuitively. I've got a rule that if I think it, I want to do it. So if I'm fishing and my intuition's telling me, you know, I think a spinner bait would be better. I think a heavier jig would be better. I think a lighter jig would be better. I want to be able to react to what I'm thinking uh, and change over as quick as possible. I think that's one of those, that's the demon that gets you sometimes. And a backpack, if you think to yourself, oh, I've got to take it off, I've got to rummage through it, or, um, you know, I've got to bend down, or, you know, even just changing a lure becomes a bit of a ball ache. So for me, it's all about speed um, and having everything close to hand. You know, so here, for example, I've got a couple of uh, uh, plastic boxes of this sort of size, which is like, I don't know, eight inches by about five. Um, they fit in there perfectly. I've got one or two of these, which has got all my jig heads in, that's all labeled up for speed. So I can go straight in. I know that I've got um, so on this larger, on the smaller ones, I've got a pouch in here with smaller ones where I get really accurate with like 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.1s, all the way through in the different, uh, in the different little, little pigeon holes. And then on this one, I've got three and a half, four and a half, fives and sixes, sevens and eights, tens, twelves and fifteens. All right. So I know exactly what I've got and I'm, you know, whatever I need, I can get straight there. Got another small pouch that's got all my bits and bobs in. We'll go through this a little bit more in detail later on. Some water, some other pouches that hold stuff. Um, yeah, my my um, my mat with my measure in, all that type of stuff. We'll go through that a little bit later on. Obviously, I've got the rod up next, so um, I'll just go through a couple of different rods for my street fishing. If I'm ultra light on canals, uh, this is the Gunky Iron T, six foot. I really like short rods if you're not casting very far. Most of the small canals that I'm fishing, Basingstoke Canal, 12 to 15 meters wide. Uh, Grand Union, exactly the same. Kennet and Avon, exactly the same. Most of them between 10 and 15 meters wide. So for me, I like light, um, responsive, easy to cast, can have in your hand all day style rods. Um, without having, you know, there's nothing needed about those types of venues. Um, in fact, I could probably, at a push, even get away with some pike fishing on this rod. It's a 1.5 to 10 grams. It's about six foot long um, and it's great. It's super light, comes in about 100 grams, 105 grams or so. Uh, and I really like it. It's a good all round rod through, through action, um, but fairly fast. It's like a fast, moderate action, I think they call. And it, it's just good, I just like it. It's a nice, lightweight, responsive rod. The reels, the 1000 reel, um, I do like the best reels that you can get. This is super lightweight, um, one of the lightest on the market. And more importantly, the turn ratio on this reel is what I'm looking for. Okay, so a small reel in the 1000 size will give me, for every one turn of the handle, will give me 60 centimeters retrieve. Okay, 
If you've got the same setup, same line, same kit, same rods, same lures, but you've got a 2,000 or 2,500 size reel, you probably won't even notice that for every one turn of the handle, you're retrieving 75 centimeters or maybe even 80 centimeters, depending on the ratio, all right? So you're fishing without knowing anywhere up to 20% quicker than I might be. And when there's days that you need to go super slow, trust me, that makes a difference, all right? So that's my light setup, 1.5 to 10 grams, gunky iron T, THG reel in the 1000 size. And that's pretty much as light as I go. Next one up from that will be um, sort of my medium, medium light. Uh, gunky iron T again, next one up. So I've got six foot six on this one, six foot nine, this one is three to 15 grams, although it's a slightly softer rod than this, uh, and the 1,500 size reel. So this just goes up slightly if I'm using a uh, bit of kit for um, Xander fishing, for example, pike fishing, a little bit of the small jack pike that we'd get on the canals would be, you know, it's just a rod that goes a little bit stronger uh, compared to this one. So I can cast further, I can use slightly heavier jigs, and I can probably work other baits as well. Things like spinner baits, uh, small plugs are probably easier to use on a slightly just neck size up than the ultralight. And then when I'm going up again, I'll go up to, now this is the five to 18 gram, but it's in the shooting range, which is the top of the range. It's a much faster blank. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous rod this. Um, I'm really, really getting on with it a lot. It's very versatile, but it's just got so much power in, in the, the base here. But the tip is just beautifully thin and sensitive. Uh, yeah, it's five to 18 grams, so just a little creep up. And for my street fishing, I don't find myself needing anything more than that kind of medium light. This one's, uh, again, it's up to seven, what are we up to? Seven foot five on this one. So again, just creeping up a little bit in length, a little bit up in strength, but also a faster action rod. So if I'm Xander fishing where I'm casting, places like the Gloucester Canal, um, places like when we were in Rotterdam at the Gunky Iron Tournament, places, those slightly bigger rivers, slightly deeper, I might be using up to 10 or 15 or possibly even 20 grams I can get away with on this. But it's a fast action rod and I can really punch it into the wind if I need to. So a little bit stronger and that's about as much as I find that I need on most of my street fishing setups. Last but not least, I'll take you through a couple of my net setups. Now, this is my, my favorite, my preferred one, if I can get away with it. Um, it's the Gunky uh, Street Handle. Um, it's the new carbon one, it's very short. It's only about 30 centimeters, 35 centimeters maybe when closed. Um, really nice rubber bung on the front. I've also got another one over here, which is um, the four meter setup. So if I know, again, that I'm fishing those big rivers in the cities where you've got long drops off the edges of walls, um, where you need that extra length to be able to net fish. Um, I will go for the four meter, but where I can get away with it, I'll go for this one, which is two meters. Now, something I just want to take you through, because obviously my rod is on this side and I like to have plenty of room. Um, I do want to take you through the netting process, because I think this is something that, it's that critical time where if you hook a decent fish, You've got to have a very, very smooth, uh, well-oiled operation to get that fish in the net. I've seen it before where people are splashing around, they can't reach down properly, they can't extend their net properly, they're trying to pull the fish up too hard, the hook comes out, and you know, especially if it's in a tournament, that might cost them uh, a, a, a place or, or a prize, or you know, that's just not acceptable to me. So. I've thought a lot about the netting system because most of the time you're fishing in pairs as well, but you just, you have to be able to rely on the fact that if you do get an opportunity and a fish pops up and you need to pan it straight away, um, you can't be waiting for your mate who might be 20 yards up there and he's messing around with his rod, putting it down, trying to get his net sorted. You know, there's been plenty of times before where even in a pair situation, 
I've been uh, using this setup, uh, and you've got to be able to net them straight away. So, what I tend to do is the first thing to note. I've got a um, a really cool magnet system here. Now, this is um, I got this off Mike McGuire, and I think Mike McGuire probably got it off Vidar, and Vidar probably got it off someone else as well. But basically. You get these for uh, trout fishing. A lot of the trout fishing nets you tend to hang off sort of the back of your collar on their little uh, on their sort of jacket systems. Got a small magnet and they just yank them off their back and then they've got the handle straight in their net. So it's similar to this. Um, I put that in between because you don't want to while you're playing a fish. You, you know you don't want to be ripping this off. It gets caught around your collar, pulls your hat off. You've got your glasses, whatever. You want everything to be smooth. So very simple. A quick yank and off it's come. Completely free now to use this. All right, so imagine I've got a fish on here. I've got the rubber bun. So all I'm using, you can see there, I've pulled it out already, just with one hand, using a couple of fingers, extend it. Now what I tend to do is throw the net and it's fully extended. Now if you guys can see that, I've got full two meters extended in one go. And just to test it, how far it's come out, if I pull it hard, probably got another 10 centimeters there. But the reason that I can extend that almost fully immediately with one throw is this tip. You've got to drill a hole in the end of the butt cap. All right, so I think I've done a six or maybe an eight mil drill piece there. And what that does is it stops the suction. You get a small amount of suction between all of these pieces as they're coming out and it will only extend about half or maybe two thirds at best. It means that the net's still a bit wobbly um, and it's not fully extended and it can be a bit of a pain. So if you drill a hole in the end, you don't get any of that suction. And when, so that bung's in there, out with two fingers, throw the net, fully extended, as you can see much, much stiffer, ready to go, net your fish. All right, so that's a top tip. Um, in terms of the net head as well, I've thought long and hard about this because if you've got a net that's too big, it's an absolute ball ache. Um, they get caught in brambles, they get caught around your feet, in your hooks, like they're just always a pain. But if you've got one that's too small, then you're potentially running the risk, you know, I've, I've been just about lucky enough to squeeze like you know 84 centimeter zander into a tiny net um, I've had big pike that I've managed to sort of just about squeeze into nets but you're relying on quite a lot of luck and the fact that you've got a good hook hold you know if you start trying to shake a fish in and it basically bolts that but there's such a short line between you and the fish that's when the hook can come out the line can break you know, you can end up in a real pickle um, if you haven't thought about it before you've arrived. So these nets I've found um, fill the perfect gap between something that's too big and something that's too small. Um, so I can comfortably get mid double figure pike in here, no problem. This is the 22 centimeter one. I've got a slightly bigger one there, which is a medium. They're kind of like barbel nets. Um, but then if I know that I'm exclusively kind of wasping, I will. Um, I will use this census net, super lightweight, it only weighs literally a few ounces uh, and it really trims that weight down for me which I do like when I'm street fishing. But yeah, so that's my main setup, the Gunky Street Fishing Handle, the new sort of two meter one, uh, it's a Witchwood head and it's also got, it's got enough depth in it so that if you are fishing th the walls where you have to net a fish and pull it up directly if it's not deep enough, you can see how a fish can lay in the bottom there. If that net isn't deep enough, that fish is only in a tiny amount of the bottom. And the chances of it spilling out if you're pulling directly up the edge of a wall, is that's too much of a risk for me. So um, you've got to look for something that's got a little bit of drop to it. And the good thing about these nets is um, they've got a small magnet in the end and another magnet just in there. So it actually clips in and holds the, um, holds the net up off the bottom. Once, as soon as I hook a fish or, or net a fish, see how that drops down? I've got loads of room then in order to uh, be able to get it in nice and safe. So, right, that's the main sort of kit. Nice and lightweight pouch. 
rods, um, depending on what I'm using, will go up through the layers from six to seven and a half foot and from 1.5 up to about 18 gram. And then that's my net setups. Now we're gonna go into what I keep in my pouch and a few tips and tricks about um, how I swap out throughout the day, how I approach tournaments and how I approach my street fishing for different species and look a little bit closer about what magic I got going on in here. Right guys, just to finish off uh, the street fishing equipment that I take, uh, we're gonna go through a bit more detail about what's actually in the pouch, where all the magic happens. And um, I think the first thing to note is the decisions of what you're gonna take before you go are really critical. Um, you have to give yourself enough versatility to be able to catch different species and take your chances when they arise. Quite often I've found before, you might think, oh, it's just gonna be a perch match and you go perch fishing, but then you start to see a couple of swirls from pike and that would really add to your card if you're in a tournament. You think it's gonna be a pike match uh, and it turns into a Xander match. You've got to have enough kit to be able to cover those, but at the same time, street fishing is about being lightweight and mobile and covering distance. So you can't have too much kit. So making those decisions is really critical. So first up, I do a lot of soft plastic fishing. I take a couple of um, boxes like this. This first one is going to have um, all of my small stuff in. So I can do wasping. Uh, I've got inch and a half, two inches, two and a half inches, some small creature baits that I really like using. A real mixture of different sort of styles here. I'm a big fan of the gunky lures, but you know, I've also got a couple of other makes in there. I've got some Daiwa, uh, I've got some Capitos, like a real mixture. Just for me, it's about confidence. When you're in a tournament or when you're street fishing, you wanna be able to feel super confident um, that what you've got on the end is is working for you. So, um, you know, I tend to experiment when I'm practicing, but when I go for a tournament, I'm almost exclusively trimming it down to what I know I've caught on before. So that's my sort of small, small box. And then in this one, I've got slightly larger things, starting from sort of two and a half or three inches. Um, going up some small small sort of pike lures that I'd use on the canals here, some Ned rigs. Um, again, different colors, different shapes, different presentations, but I've got most of my bases covered. And I tend to have a minimum of two of each of the lures. If you lose one um, on a specific lure, uh, you know, if, you, if you're catching well on it and then you lose it, you know, it's it can be a real pain. Often there's something very specific about why the fish are feeding or a certain lure that works really well. So I wanna be able to have a minimum of two of each one uh, in all of my boxes. Next up is my jig heads. Again, two boxes. So one, which is my uh, real kind of lightweight stuff, which is from 0.8 uh, ones, 1.2s, going up to about three and a half, four grams in here in all the little pigeon holes. Different size hooks, different shaped heads for, um, for different uses and it's really critical that you ca cover enough of your bases and have uh, and have plenty so i normally take a minimum of about 6 to 10 or more in each of the each of the range here and then if you do find that they're you know you're uh, uh, you're catching really well on a specific weight lures might be just enough to cast uh, to the right distance or it might be just enough to get the right sort of presentation or light enough to um, you know get positive bites rather than nips you you know if you start losing a couple which you do there's lots of snags in there sometimes you're only fishing like i said sort of eight six pound or eight pound fluorocarbon um, or even lighter than that sometimes you need to be able to have plenty of replacements you know uh, if, if you're if you're catching well and then your kit lets you down because you haven't got enough of it that's that's a real problem for me um very specific on that as well uh i weigh all of my uh, jig heads as soon as i get them um i've got small uh, little set of scales like this uh they go in 0.1 of a gram so they're really accurate uh and you'd be surprised you'd be surprised uh of of a jig head that says it's 1.5 and it's actually closer to two now, it doesn't sound like a lot, you know, what's half a gram here or there. But it's not half a gram. If you think in percentage terms, it's 25% heavier. And that's a hell of a lot. Um, and trust me, when it comes down particularly to tournament fishing, the number of times that I've won by a centimetre or two centimetres or five centimetres, um, these are your small percentage gains. 
you know, knowing your kit inside out, knowing exactly how to present a certain type of lure with a certain type of weight jig head or a certain size hook or your net or your rod or everything about it, you need to know inside out because then you've got a much better chance of being the guy that's got two centimeters more rather than two centimeters less. Uh, and, you know, uh, I can't afford to be the guy that, that loses out by two centimeters. It's not acceptable to me. Um, another little small pouch here. I absolutely love these little boxes. They're really, really hard wearing. They're gunky boxes. They're not the cheapest, but um, they're, really, they're just they're quality, absolute quality. Um, made of really good plastic. I've had them for a year or so now, and they're just, they're just brilliant. So I fully recommend them. I've got everything in here with my small chub weights, uh, hooks and some drop shot hooks, a few trebles if I need to make stingers up on the bank, uh, drop shot weights, um, nail weights, a uh, little bit of a mixture, some swivels and clips. Uh, that's all in there. It's my bits and bobs box. And then, I should have gone through this earlier, my plastics. Can't leave home without your metals and your plugs as well. Uh, a lot of people exclusively fish plastics, and I tell you what, as soon as that water warms up, less so in the winter, like plastics are a big 90%, 95% for me of my winter fishing. Um, but when it comes to particularly a bit of moving water, so moving canals, smaller rivers, or if you go abroad, metals and plugs like they just come into their own so spinner baits spinners they might be sort of old school fairly basic styles but again i've got um quite a decent range of i'll tell you one that i've been catching on really well is this little spinner bait it's the uh it's made by ilex um and it's just brilliant it's called the stream master it's um it comes in four and six grams got a little colorado style blade on it Been catching loads and loads of fish on this especially on the rivers lately that's an absolute beauty um small blade baits as well they can work really well especially if you're in a wind you've got to cast a long way but you want to keep it light you know for the size of lure i've got there that's absolutely tiny um probably only about an inch and a half and i've got three and a half grams out of that straight away I've uh, got closer to um, eight, six or eight grams with this one. And again, real small bait, uh, but can lose it really far in a crosswind um, or if you're fishing areas that may be a little bit deeper. Spinner baits, spin mads. I've got real mixture of stuff in there, but really good and can't leave home without, you know, some plugs. I've got some surface poppers, walk the dog style, uh, some little crank baits, some little jerk baits, just a bit of a mixture of stuff that I'm I'm really confident in. Uh, fluorocarbons, I've, I've sort of made up this little system where there's um, an elasticated loop that comes on the front of this gunky thing. So I basically, what I do is um, punch a little hole through my fluorocarbons and then I rank order them sort of from lightest at the front to heaviest at the back. If I know I'm going out street fishing, it's going to be more Xander and pike fishing. I'll go for heaviers. I, you know, I don't need to have more than about five on here to give me a good range. Uh, but I won't be needing to take my four and five pound fluorocarbons if I'm fishing heavier. So I can adjust it uh, to select the right five that I want. Here we go. I've got five, six and a half, eight, ten, twelve and sixteen. So pretty good range that stays on there most of the time and covers me. If I am fishing abroad, I might even go up to... Uh, sort of 20 or even 25 pounds sometimes um, just because you get so many snags or or um, you know it's big deep fishing maybe for asp uh, or other strange species that bite really hard uh, always need a bottle of water to take with you as well keep you well hydrated i often just in terms of tactics i often take uh, headache pills ibuprofens and paracetamols you want a thousand milligrams of paracetamol and 600 mils of ibuprofen that lasts you every four hours it's hot, it's sunny, it's concentration, your blood sugars go down. For me, that just gives me a little bit of insurance of like not getting a headache, not getting a sore knee. Um, you know, it allows me to focus on my fishing 100% rather than kind of being like, oh, I'm a bit tired, I'm going to sit down or the concentration out of my casting starts to go and it's, you know, you start throwing it up a tree and it just becomes a bit of a nightmare. So small things like that, having things like painkillers, having things like water will get you through a day on the bank or a tournament 
and um, and it'll keep you fishing at the top of your game for as long as possible. Uh, pliers, obviously, if you catch a pike, you've got another set of pliers here, which is more sort of utility stuff. Got cutters on the side, uh, split ring nose there to open up if I need to change any trebles or change any split rings. And then obviously I've got my mat. Everyone needs a mat and the measure on the inside as well. So roll that out, nice and compact, super lightweight. Um, got my measure on the inside like that as well. And um, that just pretty much wraps up all of my street fishing equipment. So um, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I go into a little bit of detail in these videos, which I really like. Let me know if it's a bit too much for you uh, or let me know if you want more or there's any specific uh, type of technique you'd like me to try and take my, you know, show you my equipment um, or go through some various techniques. And um, yeah, if you like it, hit subscribe below and um, see you on the next video. Thanks very much.